Robert Weiss. We keep saying has diabetes, but almost zero craft insulin surveys. Everything is based on the A1C, which we know is sloppy at best. Thanks. Thank you for bringing that up, Robert. For those of you who are not in on what Robert's saying, let me interpret some of that for you. So one of the bigger problems, we mentioned docs don't know how to diagnose it. Number one, by the time they're age 60, have some level of insulin resistance, over half. And that's as measured by A1C or fasting glucose, which is even worse. In fact, if you look at, at JAMA, there was a JAMA article a couple of years ago. So we're not talking about 60 year olds, we're talking about 30 year olds. 30 and up, over half of Americans have some level level of prediabetes. As Robert's referring to here, most of them get screened by mechanisms that are not adequate. They're not appropriate. They're really bad. A1C is even better than the most commonly used screen. And the most commonly used screen is fasting glucose. A fasting glucose, most labs will say over 100 means prediabetes and over 125 means full diabetes. The reality is over 90 means prediabetes. You should at least start looking very hard if your fasting glucose is over 90, clearly over 100. A1Cs, 6.5 and above full-blown diabetes. Now then you get into arguments. So was it six for prediabetes or five and a half? You start getting close to five and a half and I start worrying about prediabetes. Most doctors think that A1C is the state of the art. Well, if you look it up, it's not just me saying this. The American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists, AACE, is also pretty clear that to make the diagnosis of diabetes or prediabetes, as Robert is saying here, A1C is inadequate. And here's why. Anything that impacts your hemoglobin can impact your A1C. You see, A1C is what we call an AGE, advanced glycation end product. An advanced glycation end product is simply a protein that glucose has permanently latched onto. And that's what glucose does in the blood. It latches onto proteins. I used to have a diabetes instructor in med school and he'd pull out a piece of plastic from his pocket when he was teaching about diabetes. It was a plastic model of a muscle and he would say, this is your muscle on diabetes. He said, you think I'm kidding? I'm not. Diabetes actually plasticizes our body tissues. The glucose tends to latch on permanently to protein and it denatures it. If you want to know what denatured protein is, fry an egg. That's what denatured protein is. Before it's fried, it's not denatured. Once it's fried, it's denatured. Now you can start to latch on to his analogy there. As Robert Weiss mentioned, there's a thing called a Kraft Insulin Survey. What we want to do is get a moving picture of glucose. And a Kraft Insulin Survey looks at fasting, glucose, and insulin levels and then gives you a challenge. The typical protocol is to give you in 100 grams of glucose in a sweet syrupy tasting drink. Then measure your glucose and your insulin at half an hour, an hour, two hours, three hours, and four hours. Now we do something very similar in our routine testing for this. We've got a couple of different ways where we're accessing something similar. We're working with a company called I'm Aware Now to get a simple, easy home version of it. You can do a home version with a lab called Meridian Valley Labs. What we routinely do is do a similar craft survey using just one and two hours and 70 grams of glucose from Quest Labs. That really gives us the information. Now, some of the more academic people watching might say, oh, that's crazy. You don't have to do all that. Just do a HOMA IR. I see HOMA IR ratios all the time that look totally normal. A HOMA IR is just a ratio between glucose and insulin, usually in a fasting state. The problem is it's a still picture. It's not a moving picture. And you know what? You could take a still picture of a car getting ready to run over somebody and that person's going to be fine. But you take a movie and you see that the person just got run over. It's the same concept with HOMA IR versus this type of glucose challenge. You really need to do the full challenge. Thank you, Robert. That was a great question. I appreciate you bringing it up. Winning is exciting, but you know what? What you're winning matters even more. How about the chance to win another couple of decades of life, healthy life, understanding the cause of heart attack, stroke, dementia, the major killers and disablers, and how to prevent those. You can win these courses to do just that. How do you do that? Click the link below, watch the video, answer the questions, and the more you answer right, the better your chances of winning. Give it a try.
Win things like free courses that can save your life.